Hey guys, this is Jake Calderon for Jay Unboxing here with a preview and predictions for the 5 vs. 5 card Match Room vs. Queensberry, headlined by Deontay Wilder vs. Zile Jong. And as always, these are just my takes, my predictions, of course, yours can be left down in the comment section below. Would love to hear them all. But of course, before we get started, please be sure to like, subscribe, share, all that stuff definitely helps out and I do greatly appreciate it. And a little bit of show info here. It's headlined by, as mentioned, Wilder vs. Zong. This will be at the Kingdom Arena in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, where every fight is taking place nowadays, apparently. It'll be on pay-per-view, of course, in the heavyweight division, with no titles on the line. In the featured fights, you'll have Raymond Ford defending his WBA featherweight title against Nick Ball. You'll also see Philip Hergovic taking on Daniel Duvall in heavyweight action. You'll see Hamza Shiraz taking on Austin Williams in light heavyweight action. And Willie Hutchinson taking on Craig Richards in light heavyweight action as well. And, of course, you will also see Dimitri Bivol making a defense of his WBA light heavyweight title against Malik Zinad. However, won't be predicting that one. We all know who wins. That's not the fight we're looking for anyway, so we can leave that one by the side. But in any event, those are your fights. Well, damn, this is a pretty loaded card. A couple of non-title heavyweight fights that can actually mean a bit of something in the division. We also have a near pick em at featherweight that could be very interesting as well. On top of that, you have the promotional rivalry between Matram and Queensberry that gives every one of these fights a little bit of spice. On friendlier terms or not, both Eddie Hearn of Matram and Frank Warren of Queensberry want their stable to win out. Let's not kid ourselves here. So, with all of that in mind, let's get to some of the biggest questions heading into this card. For starters, who will do less, Wilder or Zhang? It's maybe a bit tongue-in-cheek, but also not... Really, both fighters have certain skills they can use. The question is, will they? Both, in very recent fights, have had some, albeit brief, moments, but have failed to look their most effective. Forget most effective, actually. Both have barely thrown enough shots per round to really be competitive at times. Both against Joseph Parker, coincidentally enough, they struggled to get going. Wilder looked timid, unsure of his power, and Zhang dropped Parker, but lost virtually every other round that Parker stayed on his feet. It just wasn't a great performance for him either. One in this fight, you would presume, has to take the initiative. I would also ask, who will have the breakout performance? This card is pretty damn stacked. Day of Reckoning was a great card, and the Crawford card in the summer looks fire as well, but this has some decent pick em fights and some quality fighters. With that, you wonder which fighter will have that breakout moment. And to me, the fighters with the best chances are Nick Ball and the winner of Philip Bergovic and Daniel Duvall. It's not a prediction that they will win. It's just based on the odds and where they are at in their careers. Wins for any of these fighters could really catapult them to another level, especially Ball and Dubois, because Dubois needs a big win, and Ball is looking for that first big career-defining victory. And finally, who is likely to come out with the team win? Eddie Hearn or Frank Warren? That's one of the kind of funner questions that comes to mind for me in this one, because let's not kid ourselves, both promoters want those bragging rights. It's all well and good them sitting next to each other and having some YouTube videos out there and working together, fine. But they are doing this for two reasons. The money is there, of course, obviously, and they think their squad can actually take it, so it's something that they're invested. On paper, Hearn has the edge in terms of the odds, but... Odds don't mean much once the fight gets going, and the odds are close as it stands anyway, so that really doesn't mean anything until the fights really happen. So, without much more ado, let's break these fights down. Starting off with the main event here, and we'll go with Wilder first, and for me, it's vital that Wilder throws the right hand. That should be obvious. However, equally obvious is the fact that as he steps up the competition, he needs to throw it with a bit more intelligence. He can't just rely on it bailing him out every time. As the fighter Wilder faces get better, which is crazy to say of a former world champion, he needs to use more feints, more jabs, find the right angles. In general, it needs to be thrown with a bit more nuance, as I like to say. And in general, it just means that he needs to get a bit more active and engaged. It can't just be thrown with him sitting back. He needs to really commit to it. Wilder can't just sit back and hope that the opening presents itself. Now, he could obviously bang, so it might, but banking on that at the highest level just doesn't benefit you. So step into your shots a bit more, use those two or three inches of reach from the outside to your advantage, and make sure you're stepping to your left to line it up and stay away from Zhang's left hand. Put together the more forward attack with the setups for the right hand and give yourself a solid chance of landing it and also staying out of harm's way. Now, switching over to Zhang. For Zhang here, I think 
It's simple. You have to get busier. Similarly to Wilder, Zhang gets a bit power hand-happy and relies on single shots. The guys that have success against Wilder are the guys that come forward and let their hands go. Yes, you want to throw that left hand, but occupy him with the jab as well. It helps set up the left, it gets you in closer, and you can do more work. If you do find your way inside, tag him to the body. Wilder can fade and has that long frame. You should be taxing it anyway. Of course, this doesn't mean get reckless. You still need to be mindful of that right hand. Wilder wants to circle to his left. Naturally, you want to be heading to your right, which also lines up your power blow and keeps you out of the range of Wilder's power shots, potentially. Now, you do have a tendency to leave your guard down a bit low, especially when you get too comfortable. You can't get comfy with a puncher like Wilder, so keep that guard up as well, up the tempo a bit, and be mindful of his right hand while you're looking to set up your left. Now, in terms of my pick, maybe the toughest pick of the lot, in my opinion, but I'm edging towards a slight upset with Deontay Wilder, as he is the betting underdog. If Zhang had a bit of a history with really piling on pressure or damage outside of the Joe Joyce fight, I'd side with the Chinese fighting man. But he doesn't. So this could be a battle of who lands the biggest single blows, and that, to me, could be Wilder. You know, granted, this is heavyweight boxing, so this could all be wrong, and this could all be a back-and-forth battle. Who knows? I think it actually might be. But in any event, I think Wilder moves and uses his reach and during a bit of an exchange probably drops Zhang. He might beat the count, but Wilder rushes him and finishes off the job in that round. Winner Deontay Wilder via mid-fight stoppage. Now heading into what I believe is the co-featured bout of the evening, or at least is the second most interesting fight to me with a title on the line, is of course Ford versus Ball. And we'll start with the champion here. With Ford, I think it's important he puts his punches together. He doesn't have to break any output records, but he needs to make sure he isn't relying on single shots. He needs to throw enough to keep the rushing ball at bay, or at least thinking before he's rushing in. Combinations also allow you to score quickly, but then take those steps back and try and counter ball. As he looks to return, you counter well and can make ball pay if you time his lunges. The uppercut can be an effective shot if you catch the shorter fighter with less reach, leaning too far forward as well. When you are moving backwards and looking to set a trap or get some space to reset, be sure you're circling to your right. Ball has a good right hand and you aren't trying to walk into it, so don't make it easy for him. Of course, mind the left hook as well, but the right hand is the worrisome shot. This, of course, also lines up your left and allows you to get the better work home from the outside. So make sure to get your hands going, walk him into those counters, and be sure you do so while circling to your right. Now switching over to the challenger here. As the shorter man with less reach, you don't have much choice. You need to close your man down and eliminate some of that distance. Something simple like a double jab and changing levels can help accomplish this. Of course, incorporating angles is always good, but you're a straightforward fighter, so lean into your strengths. Step in quickly, throwing that double jab and let loose that big overhand right to force him back. Once you're closer inside, you need to make it matter, and that means getting some exchanges going. Not recklessly, but you want to force Ford to sit and fight a bit more. Now, Ford will fight, and he can trade, but you have a better chance winning that fight than a boxing match from the outside with a guy with better reach. Look to up the pace and build into the fight steadily. Don't rush your work. Just increase the tempo as the rounds wear on. So get inside with the level changes and jabs, press the attack with the overhand rights, and keep the pace progressing as the fight wears on. Now, in terms of my pick here, another close one, but I think Ford takes this one and retains his gold. Ball certainly has a chance, especially if he catches Ford with an overhand shot or makes it more of an uglier fight early. However, I think the skills of Ford will keep it clean enough early and allow him to build up a lead. Ball could close out stronger maybe, but, you know, maybe make the scores a little closer, but Ford will box, stick and move, and protect that lead enough. Winner, Raymond Ford via unanimous decision. Now, heading into the quick picks here, as mentioned, we have Ergovic versus Dubois in the heavyweight division, and in my opinion, Dubois can crack, but also cracks under the pressure when his opponents don't go away, and I think that happens here. If Dubois lands big early, sure, but I don't think he does. Ergovic backs him up with straight, crisp jabs, lines him up for that right, and ends matters relatively early. Winner, Philip Ergovic via mid-fight stoppage. Up next, we have... Hamza Shiraz taking on Austin Williams at light heavyweight, and this one could be close too, and it also could be very tactical and, dare I say, boring at times based on the styles. That said, while boring and close, it could be very skillful and is still interesting in terms of who to pick, but I think the more offensive forward work of Hamza will allow him to take closer rounds. His quick jab, the reach, and his ability to put something into most of his shots without having to oversell it might just be enough to pull off the win. Winner, 
Hamza Shiraz via split decision. And of course, the final fight here, we're looking at Willie Hutchinson taking on Craig Richards, also at light heavyweight. And it's another tough one for me. You know, that having been said, I'm leaning towards the slight favorite in Richards. Again, this is basically a pick 'em, but Richards is the slight favorite. The old puncher's chance for Hutchinson, but I think he might lunge in a bit too much with the counter punching Richards able to catch him in those middle frames while he's doing so. Richards will be methodical, work his selection well, and finish him off, I believe, in those latter frames as a result of the overcommitment of Hutchinson. Winner, Craig Richards via late fight stoppage. Now, in terms of the betting odds for the featured fights here, you can see the odds here presented on the screen. Some decent value in pretty much everywhere in every direction you look. Haven't been able to find the over-unders just yet, of course, but really some very solid odds. I personally probably like in my own opinion, of course, the Wilder bet there, just because I happen to believe that the underdog picks this one up. Of course, you could find books with maybe closer or wider odds. So again, that kind of depends on your preferences there. But I do think the American has obviously a puncher's chance, if nothing else. And it's certainly a winnable fight for him. And you're getting one and a half odds, so why not? But in any event, those are your odds. And my prediction record as of this recording is 29 and 10 with 14 exact. But let me know your thoughts, your bets, your picks, all that good stuff down in the comments, of course. And please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, follow, and check out all the social media here. And be sure to visit jayonboxing.com for schedule, results, betting odds, rankings, and more. And as always, until next time.